We're talking about tanning fish skins, um, usually with bark. And I like to harvest when um, the, the uh, snow is gone and the bush is coming back to life or the tree is coming back to life because when the, our trees and our bushes are waking up, what's happening is all the nutrients from the earth are being pulled up through the, the, the main stalk of the bush, and then it goes out to, to, you know, to the branches. And right now is the best time to harvest the willows and uh, cottonwood and alders, um, because that's when all the tannins are the strongest. So this came off of a branch in front of the house, and I believe it's a cottonwood. And I took off most of the buds because they're sticky. So here's the last one. And this is a tool that we like to use. This is one that Papa Charlie made. It's really sharp, so we have to be careful. So we get first of all, we get rid of all of these sticky pieces. And then, uh, do you want to show us how easy it is to mm -hmm. peel? Yes. So it's easiest to peel with a potato peeler. I had some people, some guys, who were in the class and they were just amazed. They said, all this time I've been using my knife. And how easy, how much more, how easy can it be with that potato peeler? Yeah. And it is, you can see how nicely the, the uh, branch is to come off. And so I think what I would like for you to do is um, peel a little bit more. Okay. And then I want to talk, while she's doing this, I want to talk about tannins. Tannic acid is extracted from this organic material. And how, how much better can it get than this? We're not using anything from, you know, chemicals that come from a store or from a lab or from a pharmacy. We're taking things straight from the earth. And when we're done with it, it goes back to the earth because there's nothing in using these uh, branches and bushes that are going to hurt our environment. And, you know, that's one of our greatest uh, values is, is how we care for the earth. And we want to make sure that when we put things back into it, into the earth, into the water, back into the air, we want it to be good for our environment. So now that she's done peeling this, um, we're going to talk about extracting tannic acid out of this. And in order for us to tan a salmon skin or a fish, you know, trout or anything like that, we have to use tannic acid. That's why it's called tanning a skin. If you do not extract tannic acid out of the, the branches, you're not tanning your fish. So now that uh, Destiny has peeled this, we're going to peel a bunch of this and we're going to put it in a pot to cook down with um, pH tested water. I want to talk about, about scraping. This is a beveled scraper that my husband made. Now it's beveled only on one side and it is not sharp. This tool is made for scraping. So once I have separated my flesh from the skin, this is how I do it. This is the tool, the uluwak is what I use. So this separates the skin from the flesh. That's what helps me to do that. When that is off, then I will take the skin and I will flip it over and there is flesh and, and film of oil that I need to scrape off. So this I scrape from the center out because you'll see the grain of your uh, meat is, is uh, that way. So I'll scrape and then I will scrape on this side and then to get down to the really shiny parts of um, the skin, you know, that real sheen mm -hmm. that's on there, then I'll take my clamshell and I'll scrape that away. It's important to get the scales off um, so that the tanning solution can penetrate through the layers of the salmon skin to tan it inside. My technique for 
getting the scales off is laying it down like this and I will take my clamshell and I will go against the scales very lightly not not too much pressure because I don't want to damage this you know the how the skin looks so I'll scrape the scales off and then I'll go back and scrape with the scales down this way using a paper towel and wiping the clamshell off okay as I go along rinse 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 and then I'll put it into a bowl uh, after rinsing it several times full of clear, clear water that has, has been uh, tested to make sure that it doesn't have a lot of hardness or iron or minerals in it. And then uh, squirt like about two, ta two full tablespoons of dish soap, liquid dish soap like Dawn soap or Joy soap into the water, swish it around, and then soak my skin in there for, oh, I do it for like about three hours, something like that. Then I'll rinse it off really well. June gave me some homework to do. We had talked about how it would be nice to have a few samples of hand-tanned fish skin to demonstrate the, the dye baths during our workshop at the Alaska Native Heritage Center next week. So I've already done two small pieces of fish skin in the willow bark bath that uh, June explained and showed to us. And those are on their second phase of soaking in the 50% willow bark bath. And so I'm going to start fresh with um, two small pieces of fish skin um, that I saved from when I cooked some salmon. I um, cut the filet, uh, I had it uh, skin side down and then I very carefully and slowly cut the meat off of the skin trying to get as much meat off as possible yet not poke a hole in the skin. Over here is another piece where I was less successful at not poking a hole in the skin but this can still be used. I just have to be careful when I scrape this so I don't tear it any further. And so after I um, got the meat off the salmon filet, and this is um, a sockeye salmon filet that was harvested through dip netting um, in the Kasilov River mouth last year. Um, after I got the skin off, I just folded it in half, flesh side to flesh side, and put it in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. It's also good to, um, after you do this, um, wrap it in a small amount of saran wrap or wax paper because that way anytime you need a fish skin you can just um, take them out one at a time. So I'm just going to use a spoon to scrape the meat off, get a good grip on the end and start scraping. You'll find that one direction is with the grain and one direction is against the grain and it actually works better to scrape against the grain. So sometimes I'm holding my spoon at a 45 degree angle and sometimes I'm holding it uh, perpendicular to the plate to get the scraping tension that I need. And this is the bit with the tear, so I'm trying to hold on to the torn end and scrape. And now I'll just scrape in the direction of the tear. As you can see, fish skin is pretty strong, so. So my goal here is really to get all of this uh, tan and, and pink flesh off, and you'll, you'll see if you take a close look that there's this another, another silvery gray layer on here, and that doesn't necessarily want to come off on the first scraping. And June explained to me, because I didn't quite notice this when I scraped my other skins that she checked, um, you want that part to come off, but what you can do is you're going to let this skin have a first soak in water that's one-third willow bark or, um, in, for this instance, uh, tea water and two-thirds clean water. And that's either um, sink water that tests pH neutral. Uh, you can get pH test kits online or in um, a, uh, a hardware store usually. Um, anyway, that'll soak for three days, and when you take it out to um, change the water and check it, uh, you can check again, and this will puff up 
and you'll have a, a better time scraping it off then. But I'm going to scrape this a little bit more. Okay, so I think I did okay, so I'm going to um, check the skin. I'm going to uh, rinse it off in the sink in cold water, squeeze it out, and just check to make sure I got all of the flesh off. So I rinsed off my fish skin, and now I'm just uh, laying it flat on a paper towel and squeezing the excess water out. Check to make sure there's no flesh still on it. There's some little bits that got stuck to the, there's a little bit of fibrous uh, element on this side. And again, that's something that'll um, come off better after it's soaked for a few days. You can see these little fibers. I'm pulling on the ones that still have any uh, meat on it. And already some of the scales are flaking off. So um, that's the next step is to scrape the scales off. And um, in the right light, at the right angle, you can really see them. And so uh, right now I'm scraping against the grain and you can feel the extra tension. And I'm not scraping as hard um, because I don't, again, want to risk tearing the skin. Pretty gently scraping, actually. They come off very easily. And you'll want to work in an area where there's space to make a little bit of a mess um, because uh, the scales can really um, flip around the room and on you. So it's good to wear an apron and it's good to work in a space clear of anything so that you can wipe it down well. Because after you work in this space, you'll want to um, make sure you clean it really well because this is raw fish. So you want to uh, disinfect and clean well. So I'm in that area that has the tear and uh, so I'm going to be extra cautious here. Okay, so at this point I've made something of a mess, so I'm going to clean my workspace um, and also rinse off the skin in cold water again, blot in paper towel, and see where I'm at with this process. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm feeling for any leftover scales. So the, the, the um, outside of fish skin has a bit of a, um, a texture, and I'm not really feeling any fish scales, but I'm gonna double check it. Um, so I'm gonna use this tool, it's a little more gentle. So again, I'm scraping against the grain there, and, and no scales came up. I'm doing this gently. Yep, no more scales are coming off. So I think this is good to go, and we'll move on to the next step. So for this next step, we just need to rinse and gently wash the fish skin with Dawn dishwashing soap. It's a very good degreasing agent and we're trying just to pull out initially some of the oils that are in the fish skin. And since we recently had flesh still on it, it's also disinfecting it, which prevents it from spoiling. And I'm just working it in. And remember, this is all raw fish, so you're gonna have to disinfect and clean your area. And I'm also gonna have to wash off the outside of this soap bottle because I'm touching it with fish hands. I feel like that's worked out really well, so I'm just going to um, rinse it in cold water until um, there's no more soapy residue left. And the next step, and I'm gonna peek at my notes because I took notes about what to do from, from when uh, June explained it to me. Okay, so the next step is to put a few drops of Dawn dishwashing soap in a container. And 
This is a plastic container, um, but it's better to use glass when working with fish skin just because plastic is kind of porous. So um, ideally you'd have a glass container that you could clean and keep reusing. Um, this is now going to be just dedicated fish work Tupperware. I've added cold water. I'm putting the skins in there and I can put two in here just because this is basically two pieces making up one whole skin. And um, as June explained, whenever you're soaking fish skin for cleaning or dyeing it, you want to make sure that there's a lot of, there's plenty of extra space in the container because you want to make sure that what's inside this container can reach all parts of the fish skin. So you don't ever want to crowd anything in there. I'm going to let this sit for two hours and I'm just going to swish it around um, a few times during that two hour period. And I'm also going to cover it and put it in the fridge because you always want to keep fish skin cold um, because again, it's fresh and you don't want it to spoil. I will take a container no matter what size the container, if this was a tiny little little fish skin, I would put one third of the strong tannic acid in it, and then I would fill the rest with clear, cold, clear water. And it has to be cold because if it's warm, it'll dissolve the skin. And 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 I'll stir it all up. Then I'll put my clean and scraped skin in there and. Um, every day for three days I'll take it out of there three times a day and I'll wring it out and and um, really really work it so that I can break up the fiber that's in there after three days I'll pour half of this liquid out and then I'll add see what I'm doing is getting the tannic acid bath in it stronger each time that I pour liquid out so I'm gonna pour half out and then add full strength and then put my skin back in there. For another three days, I'm doing the same thing, shaking it up three times a day and pulling that skin out and wringing it. You really want to get it wrung. You want to twist it and wring it and, and give it that action so that you end up with a really nice soft piece of skin like this, okay? If I use full strength tanning solution right off the bat, right off the get-go, I will flash tan the skin. That means that uh, it'll be hard, hard uh, it'll have a hard case. It's called case hardening. Uh, the outside will turn hard and the inside will be rawhide. It will look like it's tanned through and through, but it's not. That's why you start off with a soft solution and build up the strength of the tanning solution. Now, you can use the same solution, same method, um, like with this with alder bark and then this is just willow bark right here. These two pieces of clean salmon skin have been soaking in the Dawn dishwashing solution. I'm just going to pour this out and rinse it. Just rubbing the fish skin. Eventually you'll need to do a lot more of this to um, tan it to break down the fibers. And when I'm squeezing it, after rinsing it and rubbing it off, there's no um, soap residues coming off, no bubbles. So I know that that is nice and clean. Just gonna rinse this as well. Put the fish skins back in here. And then as June instructed me, I'm going to put in one third of the black tea tanning solution. That's one cup, and then I'm putting in two cups of water. And this may seem like a lot of liquid, but um, I want to make sure that there's plenty of room for the tea tanning solution to reach all sides of the fish. And just for good measure, I'm rubbing it in a little bit to start with. Then I'm going to put the lid back on this and put it in the refrigerator for three days 
and each day, at least three times a day, I'm going to gently agitate it, and that's to help spread the tanning solution around all parts of the surface of the skin. Dawn took these and she washed her skins and scraped them. She did a good job getting all of the fat off of this side and she took, took the scales off of it. That's good. Did you use Dawn soap? I bet she did. So yes, did. the Dawn soap is what works wonderfully and it's important to remove the, the oil and the scales because we need the tannin which is going to work as a dye as well to penetrate through the layers of the fish skin. Dawn is my student I'm inspecting what she's done here and we want to make sure that we have even this gray matter right here scraped off because if we don't have that scraped off it's going to cause problems. The tannic acid will not soak through that layer of skin where we see this film on there. So you inspect your skin when you pull it out of your first soak and this stuff will probably show up. So we just want to scrape it off and that's a tough thing to do. because if you don't scrape it off, your tanning solution won't soak through the, uh, see it's coming off nicely. This has already been in a diluted bath, half and half, 50% full strength tannic acid that was cooked and then 50% um, clean water. You have to make sure it's clean water. So I'm going to pour half of this out no matter how much I pour out, I'm going to add 50% of what's left in here. So I'm going with this line here, and I need to add more liquid up to here. So this goes in here, and the fish skins go back in. These will be put back in the refrigerator or another two to three days and then after I, I like three days after three days all of this is going to get poured out and then it's going to be put in full strength um, tanning bath for three more days and then it's done tanning After having it in your refrigerator for the three or four days in the full strength tannin, you're going to take it out of there. Can I have your cloth, please, that I gave you? And I'm going to soak this little piece of canvas. It's thin canvas. I'm going to soak it in that. Your fish skin has layers of fiber. That's why it's so strong. You have to break up that fiber that's in there. Anyways, here we go. This is soaked. We're going to pull her beautiful skin out of the tan, and you're going to see what beautiful color it is. And I'm going to lay this canvas down. I just got back from a trip to Japan, and we visited the Ainu Nation for, a, 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 for like 12 days. And this is something that I learned from the Ainu people and from an Anai elder who shared with me that when you take your salmon or your fish skins out of the tannin, you, you wrap them. They would wrap their skin in, and, you, and then you roll it up. They would wrap their skin in their little rice bags that were about this size. Roll it up like this, and then they would take and pound it. It's going to be loud. They would pound and pound and pound flip it, pound and pound and pound, flip it, pound and pound and pound and pound to break up the fiber 
in the fish skin. I got to feel um, salmon skins that Anatoly Duncan, who is Nanai from Eastern Siberia, um, tanned his and he shared this with me. And why do we do it in this? If, it's, if your um, canvas is wet and your fish skin is wet and you start pounding on it, you're not going to be uh, working through dry creases where it would uh, then uh, split your skin and break it up. So Don, we're not going to do this today. You're going to go home. This rock is gifted to you with the canvas and this is what you're going to do. I'm going to do it flesh to flesh, uh, uh, scale side to scale side and reverse it because we want to get all areas. So I'm going to give this back to you. So after you've done your pounding and maybe you could work it during lunch and have other people do it with you, then, um, then you can begin to dye it. Okay, it's the pounding that it really needs. He said that um, you could do it for an hour. Okay. Yeah. But make sure it's wrapped really good in fabric so you don't break the skin. Yeah. yeah. This is in straight up uh, willow tannin. So if you want to dye, if you want to add dye to this, you can add dye to it. I would pour half of it out and then add maybe your blueberries or your cranberry dye to it. Leave it in this vat for three days. And after three days, you can use your wet cloth for the pounding, and it's okay to, um, it'll, it'll hold the dye. June, let me know that my, um Blueberry bath, fish skin is ready. It's probably been sitting in this for three hours, I think, something like that. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're all done. You're done with the dye bath and you're gonna take everything out. You're done pounding it. So you're gonna lay it. Here's what I do, I want, to, I want you to see this, okay? So let's say that I'm all done. We've got to that point and I've got a full fish skin or even tiny pieces, I will take this, thank you, I need that. I will take this and roll it up in the paper towel. And you're gonna be over your sink. And then you're gonna wring the water out, wring the liquid out of it. Your paper towel will absorb much of the liquid as well. This is when you know you've done a good job tanning because you can already feel that it's turning into leather. Have you felt the difference? Why don't you come to feel it? You're gonna feel it. It doesn't feel like, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's, it's not stretching, it's, it's really good. So now, what I'm going to do to um, begin to dry it is I'm gonna work it and get it as flat as I can. I'll leave it for a half hour like this, get all the bubbles out, work them out from the center out, get all the bubbles out, and then flip it over and do the same thing and leave it for another half an hour. After one hour, this you cannot miss this step, you pick this up, <clears throat> And this is what you saw Coral doing. She dipped her fingers in oil. And then, this is not really softening it, you're working the oil in by doing this. You work the oil in and you just move from top to bottom. Get that oil in there. Just massage that oil in there. Work it all down that way and then flip it over to the other side. And, and dip your fingers in that coconut oil, and then you just kind of like rub it in, 
rub it in, rub it in. The oil will change the color of your skin. It'll make it darker, okay? So after you oil that in, oil your skin, you're gonna lay it down and you're gonna flatten it. You're not gonna stretch it out. You're gonna flatten it. And you're going to staple that just real close to the outer edge. And I staple it like um, every two inches. And you wanna staple across this way and then work your way back up and across. On a beautiful day like this, not sitting in the sun, you can dry your skin. Air dry it. But don't expose it to the heat. If you expose it to the heat, you're going to watch your skin turn really, really dark. It's going to cook it in there. Okay. Then, also another thing: when you're stapling your, when you're stapling your fish skin down, you want to make sure that you have a, all. You want to measure your staples, and then you want to make sure you have a piece of soft wood like your inner bark, and you lay that. It, right on top of where you're going to be stapling. Why do I do that? Because you want to be able to remove that stapler without damaging your skin. Okay, try, try it both ways. You'll see what happens. How do you tell when the salmon skin is, is dry enough? Uh, it, it will be dry in a couple of days. Yeah, whether you're doing it indoors or outdoors. If it's moist outdoors, your skin will stay moist. So we're gonna make sure that it's a nice dry day. Any more questions? Anybody out there? Yes. Yeah, I was just gonna ask if, if you don't staple it, does it just literally shrink up and shrink all in? It'll look like a piece of bacon. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> That's exactly what it'll, it'll just kind of like yeah. curl up and crink and get crinkly edges. Mm -hmm. And we like to keep it um, you know, so, uh, nice and flat like that. Um, after you're done dry, after you take it off of there and you want to soften it more, you can do this. And when you get the hairy pieces on this side of your skin, you know that you're, you're, you know it's leather, okay? It'll, it turns into leather. It's just wonderful stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, your finished salmon skin. Um, and also when you're out shopping for skins, I like to take a beading needle with me, I usually a size 10. And like if I'm going to uh, the Alaska Fur Exchange and I wanna buy a piece of skin, you know, to use as soles for my moccasins or whatever, I'll take that needle with me and I will test my brain tan smoke deer hide or elk hide or moose hide. And I'll feel the hide for any hardness, hard spots, to see if they have missed t completely tanning it or if they just did a shoddy job. And I'll take my needle and poke it through. You can do that even with salmon skin. And if it pokes through nicely, then I know I've got a good skin that I won't have problems sewing with. Yeah, these feel good. So Dawn tanned these. I had her um, take, you, roll, the, roll this up in a wet canvas strip. So she rolled it up in that. And she spent her lunch hour, which was how long? Hour and a half? An hour. Hour, an hour using her pounding stone on this while it was rolled up in the canvas. Now get this. See what's happening? Mm -hmm. So she did a good job. That's the test. Because if, 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 if this were stiff and we tried doing this, it, it wouldn't be bending. You would hear some crackling. Mm -hmm. And then now the next phase of this, don't worry about the white stuff that you see here. That is the oil, the cottonwood oil that she put on it. So now to soften it, we're, yeah, coconut oil. So now what we're going to do is have the scale side out and then flush to flesh. We're going to do this. And I don't make a crease up here. And you know what I like to do? 
before I moved my TV out of the living room, I had a little table near Charlie's uh, easy chair, and I always threw these <laughs> on that table, and he would just sit there, just automatically pick them up and start rubbing. <laughs> now that I've added heat to it, I got heat going by rubbing it. She can just do this and rub, rub, rub. What a difference that made, didn't it, using the stone? And if you have extra oil, you can blot it off of here. If you wanted this to be suede, you can just continue to do this for a couple of days and it would suede it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what did the blueberries do to this? <laughs> there is so much drape to this. Yeah. Look at that.